The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Jeremy Schatt. You may know me from ESPN's Outside the Lines and Sports Center. What you probably don't know is that I've suffered from Crohn's disease for almost 20 years. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America's Take Steps, Be Heard walk program is the largest national walk program dedicated to raising funds and awareness to combat Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. To learn more about how you can help and to find a walk site near you, please visit www.cctakesteps.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and practice an escape plan for you and your loved ones. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I'm Hilary Duff. As a mom, I'm proud to support the March of Dimes in helping more women have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. That's why I walk in March for Babies. The money we raise funds research and local programs that help babies overcome the challenges of premature birth and birth defects. Sign up today at marchforbabies.org. Together, we can help make healthier babies possible for thousands of families. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. And good Monday morning to you, one and all, all of you wonderful Ecclesiastes and Liberty lovers across the globe. Yes, it is I, Elrod, coming to you live this Monday morning, which is March number 20 in the year of our Lord 2017, which makes it the first day of spring today. Yes, indeed. We have made it to spring here in um, northern New England, and uh, I, I, well, I don't know, I, I guess, I guess spring-like stuff will, will, will start to happen here shortly. Um, it's, it's not, not too bad this morning, I suppose. It's, uh, uh, it's around 30 degrees or so, below freezing. Uh, it's supposed to get up a little bit warmer than that today. We'll see. The sun is shining at least, and it is Monday, so what a great way to start off spring, but to start off the week with spring, uh, Monday morning, of course, uh, 603-835-3226 is the call-in number, should you wish to join, and this um, this past weekend was, uh, was interesting, um, I, I, I had some... Uh, uh, some friends that wanted to do one of those, uh, what do they call it? The, the escape room. Now I, I, I re I refused to do it. Not because I was afraid to do it or think, didn't think I'd be able to get out. Well, I, I gotta admit, I am not the greatest when it comes to riddles. I do like, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, I would not be construed as one of the world's greatest detectives. Uh, there, there's, you know, I'm, I really hate when I miss stuff and, and I miss stuff, but I, I really, I can't stand it when I miss stuff. I really do. Um, but you have to pay attention to, to every minute detail when you have, from what I understand with these, uh, these escape rooms and, uh, even most mundane, the, the problem is, is that I'm one of those people that would probably overthink it. And a lot of times it's really pretty simple. But you know, you, you 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 put yourself in a mindset where you have to outthink the people that uh, the the people that are that are working against you, and a lot of times you overthink that, uh, you know, because that's that's the way, that's really the way we're brought up. Um, if you're if you're a person that uses your mind at all, and you've taught to be, you've been taught to use your mind. You tend to overthink things. 
I'm, I'm, I'm no different when it comes to that sort of thing. And so when you overthink something, um, from what I understand in this kind of scenario, um, now, now the, the, the friends of mine who, <laughs> who went and did this thing, I think there's a maximum of the three hours or so. I don't know, but they, uh, they, they <laughs> the couple of them texted me and said they, they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> they couldn't get out of the room. And you know what? It's, um, it, it, it happens, you know, I mean, it's, it's fun for people like that. I, I've, I've seen these things, the, these escape rooms actually first came to my attention a few years ago. Uh, and, and they, they were not today. They're being used for fun. But when I first saw them, believe me, it was, it, it was anything but fun. These were, uh, these, uh, they did these, these escape rooms a couple of times on the TV program, Criminal Minds. Now, if you've ever watched Criminal Minds, um, then, you know, it was, it was, they were not fun escape rooms. Um, and, and you know, that, that may have colored my view of what these, what these things are. I don't know why human beings want to do that. Uh, I can understand doing it for practice because, you know, it's your job or, or you want to be prepared for something. But why do people do stuff like this for fun and call it fun? That's It's really not my idea of fun. I, mean, I get it. You want to be an, an amateur spy or amateur detective and you think this is the way to, to do it. But having somebody else control you even for fun like that is not fun. Not in my book. Because uh, too many things can go wrong. Now, I'm not saying things w- would go wrong or have gone wrong. I don't know if they. Ha- I don't. This is a burgeoning. In- it's it's like going to these uh, these um uh, these fright things every Halloween. People want to go to these haunted. First of all, I'm not easily scared. Second of all, most of this stuff I think is funny, not scary, which is why I don't like most horror movies. Most horror movies are just terrible. They're they're, they're comedies to me. They really are. Uh, I'll, I'll watch him from the standpoint of comedy. Uh, cause if I don't, I'll be, I, I've mentioned that many times before in this program about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, everybody talks about how scary the ring is or was the movie, the ring. And it's, uh, are you kidding me? That was supposed to be scary cabin in the woods. When it came out was supposed to be the best scary movie of its time. I thought it was a comedy. I really did. So I don't know why people want to put themselves in a position where they think it's fun to be scared half to death. And I don't know why anybody wants to be put in a position where they actually work at a place like that. I've heard more than once uh, uh, the actors in these places getting a little bit hurt, uh, getting hurt because somebody got overly scared and, 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 you know, they got frightened at the wrong time and, and their reaction was, you know, epic to say the least. And, and, And some of these actors end up getting hurt. Now, I have no idea why you want to, if you know you're going to react that way, why the hell would you put yourself in that position and go through that? Because it's fun? To me, that's not fun. Being locked in a room so you can try to figure it out and how to escape, to me, is not fun. There are people who do this in real life, and it's not a game. You know, a game is playing is playing giant Jenga on your on your porch or on your patio. A game is not pretending that you're an international spy and somebody has got you locked in a room in order for you and you have to figure out what the hell is going on in order to get out of there before time is up. No, I mean if people want to do it, that's fine, but I just do not construe that as being fun in my book. So, so no, I, I'm not interested in doing it for fun. Oh, Rod, you got to lighten up, man. I mean, you got to have some fun. So, that, I, there's a lot of other things I'd rather be doing for fun. That's not one of them. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not chastising anybody out there who might like to do that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, if you do that, that. Well, I, 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 and I also get it if you, if you do it as a as a form of of relaxation because your job is that intense all the time. You know, I can see people who who work for you know CIA or NSA or or any of the other intelligence agencies out there, maybe even the FBI, who 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 do this to blow off some steam. I can see them doing it, 
and and I, I'm I'm not chastising it if they don't want to do it. I mean, to hell, they have to do it in real life. Figure all this this stuff out all the time. So it might be nice just to be able to to do something like that. If you're in that type of position, it might be nice to do something like that to have some fun, where where nobody's life is really on the line. I mean, can you imagine going through that type of stress on a daily basis? I mean, you know, the, the, my friends told me how stressful it was because the clock was ticking. They knew it was ticking, and they had to figure out this, this, this clue and that clue and the other clue, and the and then then there was another clue. Now, can you imagine having to do that for a living? Because literally, somebody or multiple somebody's lives may literally be on the line if you do not figure it out. Now, it's one thing to do it for fun, and then you can walk out and yuck, you know out of the room and yuck it up. Ha, 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 that was so much fun. I can't believe we missed that. We missed that. If you miss something like that in real life, people die. Now, can you imagine having to do that on a daily basis? Personally, myself, I can't. I can't imagine that kind of stress. I, 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 I could not imagine that having to go to that. That's what you do for work. Not for fun. But now, now, now we like to take all this stuff that, that, that is really ultra serious stuff and we want to make it fun? I, I, you know, maybe this, is, maybe this is an exercise in like, uh, like, like video games. I mean, we now have weapon systems that are basically, they look like video games. Why? Because we have so many, you know, uh, uh, you know, millennials now, I mean, they grew up with these things, uh, and their hand-eye coordination is off the charts for a lot of them. So why not make the weapon system, <laughs> the real-life weapon systems, something that they're familiar with? Uh, so now they've taken the game, and they've made the game something serious. Uh, you, you know, you, you have these, you have all the flying simulating simulator games. Well, now those fly, flying simulators are now what they use for flying drones, which carry live weapons. So can, can you imagine that? I mean, do, do you think you'd really, after flying a drone and dropping bombs on, on the enemy all day long, do you think you'd really want to go home or to an arcade and play with another drone-type simulator? Uh, some people would, I guess, because on the others, they they know there's not nobody real is on the other end of the receiving end. There's a but there, but you have to realize that these people do this for for a living. This is what they have to go through on a daily basis, and I find it um, I I wouldn't want to do it. I'm glad that there are people out there on our side that are willing to do it. I wouldn't want to do it. So it's it's. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's um, it, it it is what it is. But and and this has, the, uh, I, I'm obviously I'm not making fun of of real life spies at all because that's, again, I mean it, it's it, the real life spy spy world is not glamorous like James Bond, um, or the Saint. Anybody ever remember that watching the Saint? Roger Moore was the Saint, and then he became James Bond. Um, or, or any, any of the other spy type of movies, you know, a, a Mission Impossible, um, the, the TV series or the movies, doesn't matter. Uh, it's really not that glamorous and things don't work out that, that way that I'd, and it's, it's not like b- the Bourne identity, you know, Jason Bourne. It's nothing like that. Or you don't get... Uh, you know, you, you you might get your passport stamped at a few places, but you you're not globe trotting all over the place all the time, and you, and you don't stay at the at the world's you know four and five star hotels, and you and and, and you don't get to bed down the, the world's most beautiful women. It just doesn't. Well, I'm sure for there might be a spy or two out there where something like that is similar to that happens, but for the vast majority of them, nothing like that even comes close. Real life spydom is more like. Um, is more like the uh, 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 Brad Pitt movie, uh, Spy Game. It's dirty. 
It's dangerous. It's not glamorous. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, that... Well, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I saw the the, the, the movie Spy Game. It had uh, 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 Brad Pitt and um, Sundance. Uh, what's his face? <laughs> I just can't. Uh, anyway, I can't believe I can't remember his his name at the moment. You know, one one of the you know Paul Newman's buddy. Um, wow, how can I can remember Paul Newman, but I can't remember you know Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I can remember Paul, but not the. Anyway. Um, um, oh, sh- sh- d- 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 Bob, Bob Redford. There we go, Robert Redford. Um, wow, geez, I I must be getting old or something. I can't remember Robert Robert. Red- that's this. That's why I'm not into celebrity. I don't try to keep track of these people. But it's it had Robert Redford and Brad Pitt in it, and um, it was. I think it was more true to life of what I don't know. Me never have been a spy. I have to defer to other people who were who are spies or were spies, but I would tend to believe that that movie um, with Brad Pitt and Robert Redford was more true to what real life spying is all about. Dirty, down in the dirt, in dangerous areas. You know, your life could end at any second around any corner. You weren't staying in 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 you know five star hotels, and you weren't dining at four and five star. Uh, Michelin star uh, restaurants and, and 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 that kind of stuff. Um, but um, yeah, you know, it, it is what it. Uh, but so I don't know why people want to do that, do that type of thing for why they would consider it to be fun. I like watching the movies. Yes, I like watching spy movies because they're entertaining because they're not real. I'm sorry, James Bond is just not real. I mean, uh, you know. To be frank with you, even though I love James Bond, James Bond is a terrible spy and should have been dead, you know, many movies ago. The problem with James Bond that doesn't happen in real life is that in James Bond, villains talk too much. In real life, they shoot first, then talk. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 50 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? 
The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays. You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Six zero three eight three five three two two six is a number that you can utilize. Um, you know, again, folks, I don't, I don't want people to think that that I'm I'm not a bundle of joy and a, and a basket full of fun because I can be fun like you know, like anybody else and do you know wonderfully crazy stuff, and I can do stuff that people think. I used to be a daredevil on a mountain bike. Um, as I get a little bit older, I'm not so I'm not so adventurous. <laughs> On the bike, but uh, I used to be, you know, not too long ago either. I was, I was a total. Comp- you could have called me a nut in the mountain bike, but uh, I don't. I, I didn't do things that were uh, death defying. At least not in my book. I mean, death defying to me would be, you know, some of these people the, the way they skydive and base jump and that kind of stuff is death defying to me. You know, going over some short jumps over a creek or something on a mountain bike in the woods doing 30 miles an hour going downhill is not death-defying to me. Some people, I guess it would be. Uh, some people wouldn't find doing that fun. I did. Which is why I don't chastise anybody for wanting to do these these uh, uh, room, uh, you know, lock in the room things. Uh, I don't, you know, these escape rooms. If you want to do those, is that that's that's fine. I just don't understand why you would construe or consider that to be fun. Uh, I would not. Um, also, because you're not <laughs> somebody. Some some person said, "Well, it's because you're a control freak. You you always like to be in control." I do, but you, you know, you know, the interesting thing. I'm one of those weird kind of control freaks. Sure, I like to be in control as often as I possibly can, but I also realize I'm hardly ever in control of anything. But really, I mean, you, some people say, well, that's being grounded, Rod. You realize the, the reality. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't change anything. You, you want to you have everything within your power. You want, you want to have in, be in total control of it. But the reality is that control, as most people understand it, is an illusion. You really don't have any. And and you know I could do a whole show about, about you know the, the metaphysics of control, um, uh, and, and I know I'd get, probably attract some real weirdos out there talk, that will want to talk about it as well. But uh, and and you get you'd get some very honest opinions and and anecdotal evidence and and some real evidence about control uh the realities of it and the lack thereof of it um a lot of people think that they are they're in control of of certain situations in their life and the reality is that is that they really when you break it down and you start tearing tearing it apart bit by bit and examining each little portion of of their life in that particular area they begin to realize that they're like oh hell man i'm not in control of anything but yet on the surface it looks like that they are um, and there's always somebody out there manipulating and pulling strings. Oh, you know, you may think, well, uh, let me give you just a, a brief, quick example is people's jobs. A lot of people think that they're in charge or they're, they're in control of their careers. They're not. Somebody else is. Somebody else is pulling the strings. Otherwise, the person who believes that they are the smartest thing since, you know, sliced bread because just about everybody thinks their boss is dumber than them. Well, if you were in control of your career, wouldn't you be in your boss's position at least? Well, of course, but you're not. Why? Because somebody else is in control. That's a rude wake-up call for a lot of people who actually think that they're in control of their life. And then they realize that the most important aspects and parts of their lives, they have absolutely no control over. And... uh I, I don't like putting myself in a position where I know I'm not going to have any control at all. I'd rather keep the illusion that I at least have some control. 
The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. Woo! There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. 
3226. That is the call in number to this wonderful program. So if you would like to uh, to express your opinion, your opinionation, uh, is, that's a program too, I think, called an opinionation. I think it's a good program. In, in, in any, any event, um, yeah, if you like to do all that kind of, you know, that kind of challengey stuff, I'll, I'll stick to board games. You know, I'll stick to the board game clue. Um, that, I, I know it's, it's, it's kind of fun to, to match wits against other, other people. And, and as you get better and better, you like to expand and challenge yourself even more. But it, it, I'll stick to, stick to board, board games. By the way, I am... Um, I, uh, I I learned something this this weekend. Um, Netflix released Iron Fist. Now I, I watched Dar- Daredevil. Um, you know, there's been two seasons of Daredevil on Netflix, and I'm wa- Iron Fist has me has me interested. Although Luke Cage was kind of slow, I, I haven't gotten. I got through the first two episodes of Luke Cage, and it's just. I've, but I understand. I realize now I'm going to have to watch Luke Cage because Luke Cage becomes friends, you know, best buds with Iron Fist. Um, but uh, there is some brouhaha surrounding the Iron Fist thing, and I'm still trying to. I'm still scratching my head o- over this. What the, what the big? There, there are people that are upset. That the uh, Danny Rand character was a white guy and not an Asian, and I'm thinking, well, in the comic books, Danny Rand was a white guy. What, what what's the you know what's the big deal? So I've I've you know I, I, I mini binge this weekend a few I think I'm up to episode five now or six, and um and. I'm I'm watching this and I'm realizing something. Now, first of all, uh, Daredevil and Luke Cage is the 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 cinematography is is exact with Iron uh, with Iron Fist. Now, from my understanding, what they what they have just done actually is is Netflix has finished filming uh, a series called Defenders. Now, the Defenders was a was a loose knit. Superhero group of you know back in the what the seventies I think maybe sixties seventies I I guess I've mentioned this before I've never I never really read or got into the Defenders because most of the 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 superheroes that were members in and out of membership of the Defenders were were not some of my favorites uh, you know Power Man and, and Iron Fist were not not two of my favorites I like Daredevil but I I never liked Daredevil when he was with a group didn't matter who, who the group of superheroes were he was always better. As a solo artist, kind of like Spider-Man. Spider-Man is not very good in a group setting, but he's awesome as a solo. Uh, and even if he just teams up every once in a while, just you know, it's just a duo, uh, that's fine. But to be a member of a group, Spider-Man is not exactly a, a, a it's not exactly a group type of superhero. Uh, neither is Daredevil. Uh, but you know, there are other heroes and and the, the defenders. Uh, I did some research, and there have been a number of different heroes that uh, that were, you know, in and out of Defenders. Anybody remember the uh, the Marvel version of of um, of Aquaman? Well, that would be Prince Namor. Um, yeah, of Atlantis. Yeah, and he could actually fly. Those little those little things on his feet could actually make him fly. Um, but in any case. Um, so, so they're, 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 they've just done uh, the wrapped. I guess they just wrapped up for a series of defenders, but they've tied this all together. And I'm watching now, now. I didn't get to the part where it came together in Luke Cage yet. I didn't get to that episode, but Iron Fist I did. And 
if you've ever watched the pro, uh, uh, Daredevil, then you know his the, the arch enemy of of um, uh, of Daredevil in New York City is an is a organization, an all powerful, all reaching. Uh, everybody's afraid. Even the Yakuza is afraid of this of this group called the Hand. Well, they they their ugly head has reared in in uh, in Iron Man, or excuse me, Iron Fist. And he's he sent back specifically. He was trained to fight the hand. Now the hand, as it turns out, uh, is a is a Asian entity uh, that is more badass than the famed and infamous yakuza gangs. I mean, you don't want to mess with that. Even the yakuza doesn't want to mess with the hand. So uh, that that that's. But there, there are people that are running around this planet that, that believe that there are groups like that. And if you actually pay attention to what these people are, the hand or whatever they call themselves, they're nothing more than, than, than the imagination of people uh, to, to put to film what they believe is actually out there in the form of the Illuminati, um, the Skull and Bones, uh, the Bilderbergs. I mean, there, there are these secretive groups that are all powerful, all knowing, all spread. Uh, you know, the tentacles are in everything. Um, now, one of the things that I find interesting is that you never, I, I don't think I've ever seen any program or movie. There's always the good guy. There's always the good guy that fights one of these. So now, now you're going to have. You're going to have Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Iron Fist coming together in, in forming the Defenders on Netflix and the Marvel Universe on Netflix. Uh, and, and you know we've seen we've seen it. To, if you if you I I sort of lost track of um, some of the other Marvel stuff. Uh, now you have the big superheroes. They're in the movies. You know Thor and 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 um, all those guys. Those guys are too big to deal with a hand. Those superheroes are too powerful. You would think that those superheroes would really want to get involved and really tear the hand apart. But they're they're more interested in saving the world, and the hand isn't trying to destroy the world. That's you know, they just want to control everything. Um, but they don't want to destroy it. So that doesn't bring the wrath of Thor and Iron Man. Um, it, it it just it just brings the lesser heroes that are all too human. Uh, you know, Luke Cage and Daredevil and, uh, and Iron Fist, uh, they're more human. Uh, but what you don't have is, is I don't see, I could be, I don't see it. So there may be something out there, but I don't see it. What I don't see is the, is somebody taking this to a more realistic level and ha- having say the Illuminati, Illuminati fighting the Bilderbergs who are fighting the skull and bones who are fighting the communists, who are fighting, you know, it, 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 why isn't there anybody? To, I'm sure that would make great theater. Or maybe that's too realistic. Now, I, now folks, you got to understand, I am not a conspiracy theorist. However, I'm not an idiot. Now, are there these groups called the Illuminati and the Bilderbergs Yes. Are they these all powerful, you know, all world manipulating entities? No. Do they have power and influence and money? Yes. Do they each have their own agenda, just like every just about every government on this planet? Yes. But nobody wants to explore that. Why? Maybe it's just, yeah, maybe it is much like Shakespeare. You know, Shakespeare used to be um, got used to get away with with writing about the ongoings within the royal court. But how did he get away with it and not lose his head in England? Well, very simply, even though he he may have been writing about what was going on in the English court. When he wrote his plays and those actors were on stage, they were not English royalty. They were some far-off royalty. 
They were the Danes. They were the Moors. They were the Italians. They were some other royalty, not the British monarchy. So the British monarchy would look back and say, well, look over and say, look, look, look at all those other, you know, you English people. You've got it lucky because the world, the, uh, the monarchs around the world, they're all crazy. But all we have to do is look back with 2020 glasses and look, and look back in history. And Shakespeare was actually writing about the British monarchy, but he wasn't saying and giving them the names of the British monarchy. They were always the Dutch or the Italians or the Moors or somebody else. So is that the reason why we have groups like The Hand? Because nobody wants to actually say Illuminati or Bilderbergs in these things for a reason. Is there a reason? I, I, don't, I don't know. I just look at it side-eye with a, with a lot of suspicion and think maybe there's a lot more going on here than, than I would like to admit. I'll admit that. No, but I. But you have to. But see, I also also look at. It, I turn my head the other way and look at the uh, look out of the other side eye, if you will, at all these conspiracy theorists. Remember the movie Conspiracy Theory? Yeah, it's great to have all these conspiracies. Eventually, you're going to one of them is going to be factual. The problem is, is trying to figure out out of the which one out of the one hundred and one that you have is actually right. That's the problem. And don't think that there isn't a conspiracy out there that, uh, that foist some of these conspiracy fables on us. Oh, there is. It's not, that's not really a conspiracy, but, you know, it, keep, keep the people distracted uh, so they don't get close to the truth. Uh, you know, we see that uh, this sort of thing happening on a daily basis with the Democrats and what they're doing, trying to do uh, due to Donald Trump. And notice how Donald Trump, Anybody here over the weekend? Anything about uh, about all, all all of the uh, you know the, the the Russian hacking? Well, I think Trump has has put a kibosh on that pretty bad and pretty hard because you ha- you had all the Democrats out there saying throwing out this red herring that the Russians hacked in in, in the election and helped Trump and that we're in, that they're investigating Trump and Trump said, well, hey, you know what? My, my house, my office, my building got hacked and was and was wiretapped. You know, Democrats stand back and say, "Oh, wait, no, 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 we didn't do that." There's there isn't any investigation. Oh, well, if there's no investigation, then how are you running around out there saying that you have information that there was an investigation that that the Russians did it? You just said there's no investigation. So is this a red herring? Well, yes, it is. And the Democrats are very good at doing that. They've been doing it for years. And they, they have some willing accomplices in the lamestream media. <clears throat> Excuse me, we all know about, <clears throat> about Trump not, uh, that question of Trump and them being indignant about Trump saying that he wouldn't, it, it would depend on, on, on how it happened, if he uh, would he accept the loss in November on November eighth, if he and and all of a sudden, you know, he's everybody was indignant. How un-American and you know, you know the, the tradition and this and that. Donald Trump is a pig. He's a he's a cad. He's terrible because he wouldn't accept it. That's not exactly what he said, but they they brought out the big guns to try to attack the, you know to attack Donald Trump for not immediately and open-handedly and 100% saying yeah you know if the if the if the vote count said that I lost and I lost I'm not going to challenge it uh, the american people have spoken uh, that that's that was supposed to be his answer uh, according to the democrats and so what happens the democrats are the ones that aren't accepting accepting it you know they'd be all over Donald Trump for not accepting the the, the vote if he, if he were to if Donald Trump would have lost lost the electoral college and Trump said well I think that there's a problem in some of the states we need to recount they'd be jumping all over him but oh no 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 now the shoe's on the other foot and they made up all this now Donald Trump's out there saying uh, there, there's I bring this up because he's out there saying that uh, um, uh, where is this story here. 
Trump says, this is from AP, Trump says Dem- Democrats made up allegations of Russian interference, and there is some evidence that they did. Because there's no proof that there was any Russian interference. Is that, and, and, and I'm sorry, didn't they tell us that they were, that, that not only should there be an investigation, but they're looking into it. You know, they're, they're, they're going to look into this. And, and, ha- and what has happened with it? Nothing. These, these people have, have well, uh, President Donald Trump on Monday, earlier this morning, accused Democrats of making up allegations that Russia interfered in last year's election and said Congress and the FBI should be, uh, should be going after media leaks instead. Again, absolutely true. Uh, where, where are all these leaks coming from? And most of these leaks are illegal, by the way. Why aren't they clamping down on that? Well, you're worried about the Russians interfering. Well, isn't all this leaking interfering? No, 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 no. The leaks are against Donald Trump, so that's okay. Uh, His tweets came just hours before a potentially politically damaging hearing in which FBI Director James Comey and National Security Agency Director Michael Rogers planned to to testify on allegations of Russian hacking and whether there were any connections between Moscow and Trump's campaign. Well, how do they know unless they had an investigation? And how would they and how could they possibly have an investigation if they didn't listen in or try to get get information from uh, from the Trump side? So. In, in one respect, Trump has put them in the corner, either put up or shut up, finally. You know, you guys, you guys were, you wired to, and it, well, we didn't do that. And then we come, then we hear, then we find out that there are FISA requests for, for doing just that. Oh, well, now they want to be specific. This is how they're getting away with it, folks. They want to be uh, pacific with this. They're trying to manipulate the meanings of the different words in their favor and the perception of what the American people think wiretapping is. Wiretapping is not just like in the old days where you actually went in somebody's house and you put little bugs uh, in their in the receiving or the uh, microphones in their telephones, and you put little bugs up in the smoke detectors, and you put bugs all around, and you and, and you tapped into certain wires or connections in the communication devices in the, in in the house or the office. Uh, the physical aspect that is what they're saying wiretapping is, and that is what they're saying did not happen. Well, of course that didn't happen because that's old fashioned. That's stupid. It's inefficient. There's a better way of doing it. However, when you go into somebody's computer, you could call it hacking if you want. It's also a form of wiretapping. When you get into their computers without their permission, you do it sneakily. You can, you can see everything that they can see on their computer. You can even listen to communications if they're doing audio or video. You can intercept that stuff and download it yourself. That is the modern version of the old-fashioned going in and putting a little bugging device on, on, uh, in somebody's phone. It is still wiretapping, but the left is trying to say, well, we did not do the old-fashioned wiretapping. Well, duh, we know that. But, but we also know now that there was at least three FISA court requests to, quote unquote, look into the Trump organization, including Trump Tower, for potential problems. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 of pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Call Rod now. 603-835-3226. Lines are open. Well, this weekend I also... Um, I was given a talking to, actually, and uh, I was convinced that I, that I now need to go see them. Well, it's, it's, it's too late to go see them in the theaters, but uh, I, I've been an anti-new Star Wars person. I've held out uh, because I, I thought it was going to be Disneyified, and I didn't like that, that whole prospect of you know every little bit turning into a, a, a Star Wars story from Di- as Disney tries to maximize its investment of all that money they spent buying the, uh, the studio from George Lucas. Um, but they, one of them was, is, is like me. They're, very, they're not anti-Disney, but they're very skeptical of things being Disneyified. They don't like it either. However, they saw them, uh, the Rogue One in the, in the first new Star Wars story, uh, from from Disney and said that they were very good and Disney did good work in bringing it back and trying to erase the uh, uh, the second uh, trilogy that Lucas did, but going back to the original uh, part of Star Wars. They, they they did a very good job of modernize modernizing it, but taking the story back to that aspect. I said, oh well, if you think so, if because uh, I I know he's just as big of a anti Disney person as as I am when it comes to stuff like that um you know so it's it's kind of it's kind of like what you, <laughs> there's a YouTube thing about Harry Potter uh, you can know you can make a movie of just about about uh about every Harry Potter scene that there is uh that there's a movie there and there's a trilogy in there and there's a trilogy and you know Harry Potter breathing and looking and uh, that's my that's what I'm afraid that they were going to do with Star Wars but evidently they're not America is America because it is so American. The children, they are the future of children, and she loves the children. Diversity is diverse when diversity is diversified. For a future you can see. For a future that brings with it all the hopes of tomorrow. By doing everything we did yesterday, we need a leader. We need a champion. We need her. 
Not for me. It's enough now. Give me it. It's mine. I want it. Just give me it. I want it now. Stop asking questions and just give it to her already. Or you're a sexist racist. Paid for by criminals and idiots for Hillary Clinton. Because let's face it, you'd have to be one or the other to vote for this complete monster. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. we got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov because fire is everyone's fight. Have you mixed your pain meds, your sleep meds, your allergy meds? Call the Poison Helpline. Has your child eaten a tube of toothpaste, a chip of paint, a wild mushroom? Call the Poison Helpline. Have you been bitten by a spider, a snake, an insect? Call the Poison Helpline. Poisonings can happen at the home, on the job, or in the great outdoors. Call the Poison Helpline first for fast, free advice from medical professionals. Call 1-800-222-1222 anytime, anywhere. 1-800-222-1222. Save the number, save a life. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. Go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. There's one thing we're focused on, and that's beating this thing. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, 
we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. America's wounded warriors are coming home. After serving on foreign shores, these brave men and women are returning to their families and communities. Many have wounds you can see, and many have wounds you can't see, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now that these warriors are back home, they are ready to enter the civilian workforce. To help, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program, a career counseling service that helps warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. These extraordinary men and women bring proven world-class job skills and a unique perspective on teamwork to the job. And to ensure the right warrior finds the right job, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right match. When you hire a wounded warrior, you hire an intelligent, talented, and committed new employee. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home the brave. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the brave. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. And hello and welcome back. I am, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I, that I follow on, on the tube is things like, um, uh, well, into, into the bad. I, I know everybody, it, they suggest these wonderful uh, programs that that I can watch. Let me be the first to say, well, I'm not the first. It's not the first time I said this. I don't watch a lot of TV, I, I, and so my it's it's not like I sit down in front of the TV every night, you know, for four, six, eight hours like like a lot of Americans do. Uh, now, if that's the way you want to spend your time, that's fine. I just don't have time for that. I, I got too many other projects, too many things that, you know, on the. I'm a workaholic. So I, that is one of the things I happen to like about this new form of media. I can consume it at my leisure on my schedule, and I can get it all at once in many cases. Uh, so I can binge it and, and get it done with and get it out of the way. Like, you know, uh, well, uh, I think House of Cards is supposed to be dropping pretty soon. I've been following that ever since it first came out a few years ago. Um, and, of course, Game of Thrones. Um, and, and, and Game of Thrones, uh, well, it's, it's a, it's a, for HBO, it's on HBO and it's weekly. You don't get the, they don't drop them all at once. Um, smartly said there are certain programs, you know, one of the things that the, uh, the second, I do believe it was the second season of house of cards and they dropped it. They, the bandwidth got sucked up because people were, were downloading it, uh, to watch it so much, so so much. Um, and this is the problem with, with Game of Thrones is that, you know, they, they do this sort of thing and they download it and it's hard. To, the bandwidth gets um, gets exceeded pretty damn quickly. And um, so, so they couldn't, I don't think that they could do that, uh, upload, you know, all 10 episodes of Game of Thrones all at once. It would be a nightmare for them. Um, it was almost that second season after everybody heard about and watched the first season of House of Cards. It was almost that way for Netflix uh, for the second season. And, you know, it, it, it's for good reason. When you when you find good entertainment, uh, really good stuff. I mean, you know, if you for those of you who are into uh, uh, Walking Dead, 
I'm not one of those people, but there are a lot of people. It is, you know, Walking Dead has won all kinds of awards. It's that good. I just didn't get into this. Breaking Bad was that way. But notice that there aren't many programs like that all at once. This, this is spread out over the past 15 years that we've had these kind of, you know, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, House of Cards. This is spread out. And notice that most of the stuff is not network television. You know, lamestream media stuff. Sure, you had uh, How to Get Away with Murder for a season. That was huge. Second season, not so much. They couldn't keep it up. I know everybody talks about scandal, but they're not. It's scandalous how, how far scandal has fallen. See, all the stuff that people continue to, to want to watch over and over again, year after year, is not on network television. It's really not. It's not. It's not on the lamestream media channels. Which is, I find it really interesting. Uh, but yeah, again, I can, I can uh, um, consume it at my leisure. I don't, I don't have to follow the dictates of of some of some schedule. Um, so. But it, it's it is what it is, uh, I guess. But you know what? I don't. Um, uh, excuse me for a second here while I deal with this this sound that came from nowhere. In any case, yeah. There's also you know one one of the things that I hate. I hate is is on certain websites. When you queue up a website, now I don't know how they get around this, but it really upsets because I, I have my settings to on, on all of my browsers to not automatically play video. Why? Because one, it takes a lot longer for the page to load up. Two, it's annoying as hell when you have multiple uh, pages up. Because some of these, some of these wonderful pages, they, they refresh automatically without you knowing it, and then they want to, uh, and they do this on purpose so they continually get the, this audio video feed out to you. Well, if I want that, I'll press the play button. Uh, but it's annoying as hell. It just like just like some of these sites, they say, well, you know, in order for you to view our content. Uh, you gotta you gotta remove your ad blocker. No, I don't. I just won't go to your website, and I don't because I'm not interested in 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 removing my ad blocker so I can be loaded up with their stupid ads just to read their opinion of something. If it's an actual story, if an actual if it's an actual news item, they're not the only ones with it. And all you gotta do is do a Google or Bing search, and sure, they're sure enough, there's a. Oh, lots of lots of other publications out there that have the exact same story. And if I want if I want it to be from from one of the big guys like AP or Reuters or one of the other news services, there is other publications that are going to have it as well. So I don't need to get it from the Washington Post or the New York Times. I love when they think that they are so special that they can you can only get this story from us. Well, if it's an if it's an op ed piece from the New York Times, yeah, I can only get it from you. But if you won't let me read it, it won't be a big loss to me. Or anybody, which is why you're in such financial trouble. You need to figure out a different way to do that. This is the problem. This is how, <clears throat> this is why we have this whole new new economy. This is also, we, you have the establishment. Now, hang on with me, folks, here. This is, a, this is a brilliant point I'm about to make. You have the establishment everywhere. Whether it be in, in, in lamestream media, politics, or business. They had, they have become so stiff and stiff and stuck in the mud that it was always their way or the highway. Well, then technology came along and got to a point where it leveled the playing field and these people are still playing the old game. It's our way or the highway, even though they're the ones being left behind because the new business and new media 
has decided they're not going to play by the old old rules. They're going to make up some new rules and play by the new rules. And all the old people, all the old look. This is why a lot of you know venerable uh, uh, retailers are neither are either out of business or on the verge of going out of business. You know, Sears and Kmart, anyone, because they decided that they were going to be stuck in the mud of time and do things the old fashioned way, so to speak. Meanwhile, Amazon was kicking everybody else's ass and even starting to dig into cuz Walmart started this at first, you know they well we're going to we're going to wait and see how e-commerce you know works out before we get into it. This is Walmart. And then okay, we're going to stick our toe in, in the water and it didn't work out so well for them when they were sticking there cuz they weren't committed to it. So they they pulled back out of it and they noticed that they were missing out on a lot of sales because Amazon was taking them. And now Walmart is full force back in, and you even see commercials on TV about uh, uh, Walmart online, you know, free shipping and this, and you know, because they realize that even with their behemoth size, if they didn't come up into the 21st century, they were going to end up like Sears. Look at all of the look at all the, the the brick and mortar retail stores that are on the rocks because they tried to stay in the old fashioned world and do business their way. Look what happened in the political realm when all the wonderful all sixteen of those wonderful politicos some of them you know were very good candidates on the Republican side not going to lie some of them were very I like some of them. But they decided to stick with the old-fashioned way of doing politics. And here came Donald Trump, who threw all of that old-fashioned politics under the bus. And they tried to stick with, they're still trying to stick with old-fashioned politics. And it's not working. It's not working. And they are flustered and flummoxed, and they can't figure it out. It's just, it's just like, you know, the, the, the retailers out there. You know, uh, how, how can Sears possibly fail? I mean, they have they have venerable things like Kenmore and Craftsman. Well, they sold those names, so now they don't have any assets. Nobody cares about the name Sears anymore. You know, they still like the name Craftsman, but now Craftsman they, they sold. I think they sold it off to Black and Decker, which means now Craftsman, in my book, is going to be a, is going to be junk. But, yeah, well, it was, I guess it was starting to become junk anyway when you could start to find Craftsman in a Kmart store. But they were trying to do things the old-fashioned way because they were too stupid and too stubborn to realize that the new-fashioned way was the way that everybody else, their consumer, was going. The Republicans and the Democrats, they lost because they were stuck in the mud doing politics the old-fashioned way. Meanwhile, the consumer, you and I, the voter, had moved on. We were sick and tired of the old-fashioned way. We moved on. We were sick and tired of the lamestream media. We moved on in poll after poll. It's amazing that you get all of these polls from inside and outside of the lamestream media that, that, that tells the lamestream media how much influence they've lost and tells them why, yet and still, they still want to remain old-fashioned and try to do things the old-fashioned way. And then they scratch their head when nobody believes them anymore. And nobody follows them. And they scratch their head. Well, you know, th- th- this sort of thing worked against Gary Hart. Remember when we, when we caused Gary Hart to drop out of the presidential race? This sort of thing worked against other politicians on a local and, and, and up to national level in the past. Why isn't it working now on Donald Trump? Well, it's not working because the American people have moved on past you. And you're still stuck down there at that old-fashioned level. Well, it still works on some people, sure. But the vast majority of us, that kind of garbage doesn't work anymore. Plain, you know, it's it's just, I'm just always amazed when I see this kind of thing. And, and, And it's amazing because they used to be able to get, the Democrats especially, used to be able to get away with everything that they were trying to get away with over the past four months. You know, but the problem is, is now you have alternate media. They, they call it alt media now. 
who's actually exposing and telling the truth. And the Democrats are every time that you think they learn their lesson, you think they would learn. This is how bad and how stupid and how stuck and old fashioned that they are. They want to try to, to pin so, something made up like Russian hacking the election and Donald Trump was connected to it with no evidence whatsoever. And so when, they, when Donald Trump goes after them and reverses it on, they all want to run scared and hide. Oh, we never said that. We never. Yes, you did. We've got video and audio of you actually saying what you are now saying you didn't say. And of course, they all, they all try to, to reframe it. So, well, that's not what we meant. You took us out of context. Uh, no, we didn't. We just caught you red-handed being stupid, foolish, arrogant, because it used to work back in the day. But this kind of stuff doesn't work anymore. And the problem is, is that you're just stuck on stupid in the old-fashioned days. You're listening to The Rod Eccles Show, the coolest, most politically incorrect conservative black man on the planet. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. That is the number that you can utilize to uh, to call this program, should you wish, anytime you want. And so go ahead and just go right ahead and and uh, and and do that, should you wish to do so. Anyway, Gallup Daily, a Trump job approval uh, ranking. Uh, Gallup does does this uh, on a on a regular basis. Anyway, uh, according to Gallup. Um, he has got his job approval rating is now down at around 37 percent. 
uh, and his, uh, his, his disapproval rating is around 50-something percent. And I'm trying to figure out wh- why this possibly, well, this is because, one, Gallup is a left-leaning poll organization, and two, they still do things the old-fashioned way, and, 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 and they still poll the wrong sets of people. Um, if you were to poll the people that actually voted for Donald Trump, now, see, this is, this is where you need to go. This is how you gauge any politician and seeing how well they do. You don't, <clears throat> you don't poll people who didn't vote for him or hate him. Hate for that, big, uh, that particular politician. I don't care who it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. If it, it, trust me. If it were Hillary Clinton, if she had won the presidency, if she were president right now, they would not be polling a bunch of Republicans that didn't vote for her. But that's what they do with Donald Trump. They poll a bunch of Democrats that don't like him. What you have to do in, in order to get an accurate reading of this kind of thing is the people who voted for him. How is he doing in your eyes? Or is he living up to your expectations? Now, if you get that kind of poll, and there have been those kind of polls out there, you find a totally different story. Because what you have out here now is you have a bunch of people running around talking about, well, Donald Trump this, Donald Trump's still a racist, Donald Trump's still a bigot. It doesn't matter what the man does. The lamestream media has tried to paint him this way. And you've got the ultimate, the ultra leftists who are just going to run with this thing. You know, the funny thing is, is that, oh, hey, the Democrats tried to hack in, into Trump Tower. No, no, they didn't, man. Ain't it? That was the Russians. So wait, so the Russians, I thought the Russians were working with Trump. Why would they hack into his system if they were working with him? Silence. So they, they hacked into his system, they hacked into our election, and they wanted, they wanted him to be president over Clinton. Why? Silence. They have no answers other than what they've been. See, they're still trying to follow the old school rules and directions and it doesn't work for them and they still they still try to put this garbage out as this old school uh, style of of stuff hey let, let, let's do a poll to see how he's well he's doing let's see what his approval poll we'll do it every week but the problem is is that when you start looking at who they who they poll overwhelmingly it's still people that didn't vote for him. well it doesn't matter what he does let me ask you, what do you disapprove of, of, of his performance so far? That the economy is starting to heat up? That, you know, jobs are starting to come back? Good-paying jobs are starting to come back to, the, back to this country? That, that's a bad thing? You don't like that? You disapprove of that? You disapprove that, that, he, that, he's, that he's really trying to improve? Make be- well, he's trying to get rid of Obamacare. Well, no, he's actually trying to improve it. I don't think you can, you can improve it because a lot of people said that even those who support it say there's, you know, that it, that Obamacare already is broken and needs to be fixed. So you don't approve of him fixing it? You know, it, it's it, when you start going issue by issue and you ask the point of question, so you don't you don't approve of him fixing it. You want it to remain broken. You disapprove of him trying to fix it. Well, I don't like the way he's going to fix it. Well, how do you know? They haven't told you yet. He's going to give tax cuts to the rich. Really? Well, we've just seen his his tax return. He paid an awful lot in taxes, didn't he? He paid more in effective rate than, than your favorite people like Obama and the Clintons. Well, 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 nothing. The point I'm making is that every single aspect that seems to be important to these leftists out there is something that Donald Trump has either done more of, you know, in form of paying his fair share of taxes, than their heroes on the left, the Clintons and the Obamas and, and a bunch of other people. He's paid more and he's paid a higher effective rate than they did. And he's trying to fix their mess. The, 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 the things that even the left says need to be fixed, he's trying to, okay, maybe you don't like the way he's trying to fix certain aspects, but you, you don't even give him a chance to try to fix it. So there you go. 
It's not, it's not the point that he's doing a bad job at all. Because if this were Hillary doing exactly the same thing, and we've already seen it with Obama and the executive, or, uh, uh, the executive orders versus Trump uh, and the travel bans, if it were Hillary Clinton and she did exactly the same thing, oh, you would be so, oh, she's doing such a wonderful job. But see, folks, that's old-fashioned politics. That doesn't work anymore, which is why Democrats keep losing and losing and losing. Call, 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 call Rod now, 6660 the Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. 
The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. I'm not Rod Eccles, and I approve this message. Welcome back. We glad we are glad. I am glad that you are out there in the listening verse tuning in. I know that you could listen to anything that you want and you chose to be here this morning. Thank you for tuning in. Um I, I'm humbled by being able to that you give me your time every morning. Even if you don't listen to every every single day. Now, time is pre- one thing you can't get back. And I do respect everybody's time uh, that you spend, you know, one, two, three hours a day here with me. That, that means a lot. It really does. And, and I, I promise that I will do my best to respect that time by giving you the best infotainment that can possibly be had anywhere on an audio level. Uh, I, I'm not a jokester. I don't tell a lot of jokes. I'm not a comedian. Um, you know, I, listen, listen to Ron White and Gabriel Iglesias, if you want to, you know, laugh yourself out of out of your seats, because th- those two get comedians are funny as hell. I love Ron White. You know, he's the guy. He used to be on the um, uh, uh, the, the Redneck tour. Um, you know, the blue the blue collar uh, comedy tour. That was him. It, he's the guy that said you can't fix stupid. Uh, <laughs> he's a guy that the the the, uh, the drunker he gets on stage, the funnier he gets. Uh, he's like George, Car- you know, I was actually watching some old stuff of George Carlin uh, last Friday. Uh, I was watching some <laughs> George Carlin. He's still funny. Uh, I'm watching stuff, you know, the seven words, dirty words you can't say on TV and, and uh, the stupid sayings that we have, you know, the uh, uh, colloquialisms that we have and phrases that we- going back to the seventies, George Carlin is still hilarious. The man was, he was a comedic genius, not, not because he just invented stuff, but just by, by looking at things that we always did on a daily basis without giving it a second thought. And he gave it a second thought and pointed it out. And it was funny. Richard Pryor, again, yeah, yeah, you know, Eddie Murphy in his earlier days, these men were hilarious. Robin Williams on stage. His stand-up comedy, absolutely, incredibly hilarious. And now you've got these, the, well, Ron White is not a young guy, um, but, you know, as far as his fame is pretty recent, uh, you know, he's hilarious. That dry Southern type of humor of his is just, he's hilarious. A, a lot like a George Carlin type of, type of com- comedy right there. Where he'll just point out the obvious, but point out how funny it is. And he won't laugh at it, at it but we figure it out and we crack up. And Gabriel Iglesias, he, now, he's, now that's just a funny man right there. Now, Fluffy's just funny. So that's not me. I'm not like those guys. Uh, although what I bring to you sometimes can be absolutely hilarious. But again, it's not something that I'm writing to be funny. I don't have any comedy skits. Well, you know, sometimes we, we, we do work on those things. We've had those in the past, little, you know, skits and that, you know, pre-programmed skits. Some of those are funny, but they're also very informative as well as entertaining. And uh, that's the whole point of this program, infotainment, to bring you stuff that's, that brightens your day 
even if it pisses you off, it's still going to brighten your day because you're going to be better off knowing than not knowing. Um, just like this particular story about President Trump. Can I just take the, a moment to say I am not tired of saying that, saying that yet? I was tired of saying President Obama after about one week. I, the first time that – when he was first elected, President Obama, you know, after he was inaugurated, President Obama, President Obama, President Obama. Okay, I'm sick of it now. I'm not sick of saying President Trump. And it's, it's the damnedest thing because, you know, you, you, you always thought of him as the Donald and Donald Trump, the, the brand master. Now he's got the ultimate brand, president. And I'm not sick and tired of saying President Trump. Well, the Wall Street Journal, along with some liberals, might be getting a little tired of saying President Trump. So they don't. Donald Trump, this is the title, Donald Trump's Bumpy Early Weeks Show His Agenda. Not President Trump's Bumpy Early Weeks Slow His Agenda. It's Donald Trump. Now, now folks, you are going to notice that they are going to use the term President Trump a lot less than they use the term President Obama. In the times that they, they, they are really going to put forth that he is the president by calling him President Trump or President Donald J. Trump is when they want to pound and ground him. Or, excuse me, ground and pound. Yeah, hey, you got to ground first. That's UFC term. Ground and pound. They are, they, that is the time when they're going to put, well, this is the president's problem here. And when they don't use uh, the term president, it's because they know they're trying to, they are going to try to, to turn the attention away from who's, who's really at fault so they can try to place the blame on Trump's fault. Here is a story from Walt, the Wall Street Journal. The headline is Donald Trump's bumpy early weeks slow his agenda. Who's slowing his agenda? Well, it isn't Trump. Well, they don't want you to read the story and say, well, look, the president isn't getting things done or getting his way simply because there are other people like Democrats in the way. So we're not going to call them. We're not going to bring let you. Well, I, look, words matter, folks. They really do. And how you frame a story. The framing of it is very important, and you can read it right then and there, right from the top. Not President Donald Trump's bumpy early weeks. It is Donald Trump's bumpy early weeks. Therefore, they're not going to put the importance of the president gets his agenda because that's what they used to say about Obama. Well, Obama's the president, so he gets to have his agenda. Well, now Trump's the president, but they don't want to let you know that he's the president because they don't want you to realize that if he's the president, just like Obama was the president, that he gets his agenda. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to cut that out. So Donald Trump has a problem. Not President Trump. Donald Trump has a problem. It's all in a frame of reference, folks. Do you understand that? I hope you understand this. This is, this is how they frame these arguments. When they want to win on their side, they are going to call him president. When they want to take away his ability to be president and get what he wants, they're not going to use the term president. Trust me on this. Now, while markets reflect optimism, controversies and legislative infighting impede momentum. Well, impedes whose momentum? The president's momentum. But they're not calling him President Trump. So why? Because the Democrats are the main culprit in trying to impede. Who else is impeding? Well, those who call themselves Republicans. You heard them on some of the talking head shows, especially Hannity. You heard people, you know, uh, like Paul Ryan. Uh, 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 you know, this man, I know, he's close to, close to traitor uh, being an uh, insurrectionist there. Paul, I'm serious. Paul Ryan is trying to stab the president in the back. It's amazing. 
we're doing this. And, and now, now all of a sudden, every, and, 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 and you see sometimes this stuff really shine through from, from the president. When he can actually negotiate and get people in the room and they start, well, this is, this is, this is it. Either, you know, this my, Ryan, this bill is the, this bill is it. It's either this bill or the highway. And now, well, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll change it a little bit so everybody can, come, can get on board. Well, who did that? Paul Ryan? No, Paul Ryan is a stand, was standing his ground saying, not nah, digging in his heels and, and, uh, and saying, no, this is, it's my way or the highway type of thing. You know, he did that while, when they brought him on board as the speaker. Anybody realize that? I haven't said this before. I said, you people in Washington are so easily manipulated. Do you not see that you, you can go back and, you know, uh, back when Boehner first resigned, wanted to resign. This program, I said, I should go back to the archives and bring some of this stuff forward. But I said it. I said, Ryan is a huge manipulator. He is making it look like he doesn't want this job. But he's been working behind the scenes to get it. And then he laid down the law and says, well, we're going to do it my way. And what? If you want me to do this, we're going to do it my way. And he was able to do that because he, he was saying, well, I don't want it in the first place. So it's no big deal. If you want me, this is the way I'm going to do it. And everybody went, oh, yes, yes, Mr. Ryan, we're going to give it to you your way. He's one of the biggest manipulators in Washington, D.C. And somehow these fools in D.C. didn't see it, couldn't see it. But I don't know. I didn't realize I was all that smart. I saw it. And now it's being proven. But he's met his match. He cannot manipulate Trump. That's Ryan's problem. That's the GOP's problem. That is Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi's problem. Those people are master manipulators and they've been getting away with manipulating you and me and most of D.C. for years and years and years. And now this guy comes in called Donald Trump, who's not a manipulator. He's just a negotiator, but he understands and knows when people try to manipulate him. He's not an idiot or a fool. And he shuts you down. He reverses it on you. I love that kind of reversal stuff. You know, one of the uh, sales techniques is something called the San- Sandler Sales Institute or the Sandler Sales Technique. A lot of that stuff, you know, D- David Sandler, who passed away uh, over about 20 years ago now, David Sandler, uh, and he wasn't a very old man. Uh, I think it was in his 50s when he passed away. I think it was cancer that got him. But it, uh, it, uh, I, I digress. David Sandler used to say about something, you know, never take the pressure on yourself. You know, you're the salesman, and you're sitting in front of a, a prospect, and the prospect is very good at throwing the pressure on you. Like, you know, the, the prospect will always say, well, why should I buy from you? And why should I do this? And why are you here? What? And, and, and Sandler says, reverse it, throw it back on them. And that's what Donald Trump does. Donald Trump refuses to take it. So as a salesperson, you're sitting there and the, and the, and the prospect says, well, why should I buy from you? You throw it back on him. Uh, I don't know. Why should I even bother selling to you? It works so often. It's ridiculous. Because all of a sudden now the prospect thinks, wait, wait what, do, what do you mean? You're not going to let me buy it? You might not let me buy it if I want to buy it? Well, it reverses everything that they've been taught, that they've experienced, even to this day. Donald Trump would have looked at Paul Ryan and said, well, we're going to do things my way because I don't want the job. And Donald Trump would have said, fine, I can find somebody else better. Because that's not what the Republicans did, but I guarantee you if they did it that way, if they would have said, okay, Mr. Ryan, you really don't want it then, so we're going to get one of these guys to do it who really does want it. And watch, you would have watched him change his attitude. But he, he, was, the, he was the prospect. And the Republicans that wanted him to take on this job, they were the salespeople. And they did not know the Sandler technique. Donald Trump does. Which is why a lot of this stuff gets thrown right back in their face. He reverses so much on these people. And they have no clue what the hell is happening to them. They really get, well, it's because they're old fashioned, the old fashioned, old fashioned way is you beat up on the salesperson. 
new fashion way, David Sandler way is, look, I don't, I don't change my price. I don't negotiate on my abilities here. I don't negotiate what we have. It is what it is. If you don't want it, you're not the right customer for me. What, what do you mean I'm not the right customer? The customer is always right. And I'm the right customer, damn it. So a David Sandler sales system salesperson doesn't sell anything. They don't. He lets customers buy it. Whatever, whatever they have to offer, he lets customers buy it. Customers want to buy. He lets them buy it. He doesn't sell them anything. Donald Trump doesn't sell anything. He negotiates. He reverses. He gets a win-win on his side. Doesn't care if you win. As long as he wins, that's a win-win. And he gets you to actually like letting him win. He lets you buy. So if there is anybody who is standing in the way of this, it isn't Donald Trump. It's the left, including the rhino Republicans, that want to get in his way to make it look and sound like he's not getting anything accomplished when Trump is getting a whole hell of a lot accomplished. See, the press thinks that we're supposed to be out there that every single day or every single week he's supposed to be doing something spectacular. But Trump knows you don't. This is not a one call close. If you want to speak in sales terms, this is not a one call close. This is a multiple call close. And every single day that he's talking to those in power, he is moving the step closer, the ball closer to the final goal of a sale and closing it. Which is something that the lamestream media doesn't get. And he's doing this even though the left and the leftists in the Republican Party have made this the slowest transition in just about any presidential history in this country. It's not Donald Trump. You know, he's not the one out there you know, saying, hey, hey, I want you to slow down my confirmation of all my cabinet members. No, that's not Trump. That's the Republicans and the Democrats doing that. So who's at fault? Well, they are. Not Trump. Not the president. And if this story from the Wall Street Journal wanted to, wanted to tell you that the president should get what he asked for because he's simply the president when it comes to this stuff, they would have said President Donald Trump. Just like at this point in time they said President Obama. But they don't want him to be construed as being the president and getting what he wants. So they won't call him President Trump in a story like this. Folks, don't doubt me. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 it started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand, and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must-read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past, and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, 
why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0 Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. Let me get this straight. <clears throat> you know, you have all this wonderful news out there. You have the uh, uh, the, the, the confidence. Every poll talks about confidence uh, from the American people as well as Wall Street. And it's all up. And this is what the Wall Street Journal is reflecting upon. Uh, sprint, since Donald Trump's election, equity and bond markets have been on the rise. Business leaders are applauding his call for tax cuts. And consumer confidence in the U.S. economy is up. But halfway through his crucial first 100 days in office, it has been tough going for the new president's agenda that inspired so much of that optimism. Republican infighting is bogging down a health care bill. Well, again, yeah, yeah, is that Trump? No. It's not Trump. It's the Republicans. And, and, and it has been pointed out by just about everybody, especially on this program. A number of times I have lit into the Republican establishment for this bullshit on this on on taking so damn long. They should, if they were serious about repealing Obamacare, they would have had a bill ready to go, much like the Democrats did when they got the chance to 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 put in place Hillary Care, change it to Obamacare, and put it in place. They had it ready to go. It, it, they, they didn't need to take months and months and months. They had it ready to... You've had eight years to come up with something, and you're telling me now, and all the, the rest of the American people, that you guys were sitting on your asses for eight years complaining about Obamacare. Yeah, we're going to repeal it. We want to repeal it. We send a bill up. And so, for some reason, the same damn bills that they, that they passed and sent up to Obama for him to veto wouldn't work now. Why the hell would they work before? And now they won't work? And you're going to blame Donald Trump for not getting his agenda? Let me tell you something. This is the most obstructionist government we've ever seen in our life. I've told you this before, people. This isn't Donald Trump's problem. He's attacking the entire system. What you have now is the entirety of Washington, D.C., save a very few people like, you know, uh, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. You've got the entire establishment of the Washington, D.C. political machine who just went to war against the American people. That's what this is. Don't, I've told you this before. Do not doubt me now. And you've got the establishment on the left, the lamestream media, who is the propaganda arm. And they want you to believe, oh, the evil Republicans are the problem and Donald Trump is just incompetent. Bullshit. It is nothing more than the establishment trying to go the old-fashioned way of doing politics, which doesn't work. We, the American people, are no longer being fooled by this buffoonery. Don't doubt me. The following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dish wipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, please turn off your radio because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. Have you ever thought to yourself, I'm a leftist elite Hollywood a-hole? 
If so, good news. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College is now open, featuring such courses as Unemployment is not paid vacation. No, Americans don't want to spend $19 for an order of french fries and the ever-popular Shut the Hell Up. Why, just listen to this big-time celebrity endorsement. I'm not Rosie O'Donnell, and I think this school's offensive, sexist, and racist. And I think you're a giant a-hole who needs to shut the hell up. Hey, we teach a course in that. The Rod Eccles Hollywood Community College, where being an a-hole is not a guarantee you'll be an A student. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill. A breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. The human voice. It can be sweet as music, powerful as thunder, and so, my fellow Americans, cheerful as laughter. <laughs> but for millions of people, it can also be a sign of COPD. This serious lung disease can make it so hard to breathe, you often can't catch a breath or finish a sentence, let alone carry a tune. And many who have COPD don't even know it. That's where your voice comes in. If you think you or a loved one have symptoms, talk with a health care provider. Early diagnosis can mean better treatments and quality of life. Join us in raising our voices for the millions with COPD who can't. Learn more, breathe better at NIH.gov. As a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. It's a huge burden lifted financially, and so it allows you to give singular focus to your child. I've never known a hospital that takes care of their patients so thoroughly 
That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When they told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. And now your focus is supporting this child. There is not another hospital like St. Jude. The patient care is unmatchable. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. We leave no warrior behind. Wounded Warrior Project is a nonprofit organization created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war. Whether those scars are physical or mental, we're here to make sure that they heal. And whether it's helping those with post-traumatic stress disorder live a normal life again or giving much-needed support to injured warriors and veterans' hospitals, because no one deserves our help more than the men and women who risk their lives to keep us safe. Wounded Warrior Project. We never leave a fallen warrior behind. Ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the raid. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire is Rod Beckles. And welcome back. It is hour number three already. Is it? Really? It's hour number three already? Uh, anyway, fastest three hours on internet talk radio is right here. Seriously, folks, I didn't even realize it was this is the third hour. I mean, I, I'm, right? Yeah, we started at nine. Yeah, yeah, so this is make it already fast three hours welcome back folks it is i your lovable host elrod coming to you live from the bunker eye studio somewhere within the great granite state of new hampshire yes the state motto is still live free or die it is not big government a bus uh yeah and i checked again this morning after the weekend and no it hasn't changed Six zero three eight three five three two two six is the call in number i'm i'm seriously still amazed that this is the third hour already i, I two hours done and gone already I miss something. I this this is like a time warp or something that just well anyway, yeah, <laughs> that's probably I probably watched watch too much too too much of this science fiction dystopian type of stuff. I I happen to like that that you know it, it, because this is this is what everybody seems to think that this is what's going to happen to the world. We're going to have this dystopian dystopian um, um, Mad Max. Beyond Thunderdome type of world, and all these popular shows—they're all like you know. Let's face it, they are. Walking Dead, civilization breaks down. It's gone now. Every it's basically everybody out for themselves. You know, the Constitution is thrown out the window. Um, you know, you live and die by the sword or the gun now. I mean, really, that, that's that's Walking Dead. Bad, into the Badlands, same thing. You know, there was a war and. It's uh, it's the end of the world as we know it. Civilization is dead. Constitution's out the window, and it's uh, every man for himself type of thing. You know, you live and die by the sword or the gun. I, 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 any others that are uh, there's there's more and movies. Mad Max is like that. I mean, it's just one after the other. It's all this dystopian type of stuff. Over the and this has been this has been 
and the more I look at, well, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard not to see a pattern here. It's hard not to see, I mean, th- this stuff really started taking off when, uh, the rumor has it is that the, the, over the, well, over this weekend, they, they also had a, uh, marathon of the matrix rumor has it is that they're going to be reloading the matrix so the matrix reloaded is going to get reloaded evidently uh with different with a different cast well they have to get a different cast because the the current cast many of them are kind of old now i mean it it was 15 nearly 20 years ago for the first matrix matrix yeah they're 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 no longer the thin uh young sprite people that they were um, you know, and not not as young. Many of them. I mean, Lawrence Fishburne is not, you know Morpheus is you know he's he's an older guy now. Uh, I go. Well, I mean, in Hollywood, I guess he could get back in shape and thin down if he really, if he really wanted to. But um, let's face it, a lot of old guys in their sixties and seventies are doing action films. Harrison Ford, anyone? Um, you know, Sylvester Stallone, the deplorables, <laughs> anyone, they can all, do, they can all do that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, so we have this dystopian type of thing. It really, really became pro I noticed that it's really become prevalent since, since, um, the, the matrix. Now, now what do they do differently in the matrix to have this dystopian type of thing? Uh, and, uh, and really, believe it or not, it really had nothing to do with the thought that the possibility of such a matrix type of thing could be reality. That wasn't it. They reframed the entire religious equation. Everywhere that you looked in the final matrix movie, there was imagery of Neo being Jesus Christ. It changed everything everything so now there is no longer god and son that manipulates or controls what happens on this planet it is all man and therefore if we go into some some post-apocalyptic type of scenario it's still going to be incumbent on man to save himself there is no greater power not even aliens that are come going to come down and save us it is all going to be because otherwise you would not have all this dystopian type of garbage out there. I mean, it's all comes down to man saving man, and it has been manipulated and embedded and impounded into people's minds in the Western culture for the past thirty years, twenty years at least, and whenever Neo decided to that he was going to be Jesus Christ. That's what the imagery was, folks. I'm sorry, it was. Even down to the to one of the final lines of, uh, of the movie, where where the big bad computer, you know, central computer says it is done. Well, well, that's what Christ said on the cross. And this is, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people hated the movies for this kind of stuff. They thought, it, they thought that, that this was a unique story that ended up just ripping off the Bible. And indeed, they did. And, they did, and what's even worse is that now, nowadays, it's not the, what is it, the, the, how do you pronounce their name? The Wychaki, Wychaki, Wysaki, whatever brothers. It's not the brothers anymore because one of them has decided that they're, that they're a woman. Yeah, so he's now a she, at least in his mind. So I, so, you know, it, it, all this dystopian stuff is now about, and I know I, I, but I am one of those people that views this nothing as nothing more than, than entertainment. But a lot of people are taking this as to, as to become or mean near future reality. Well, if that's the case, then are are we going to revert back to Game of Thrones days? No technology? Well, evidently not. So all, all this is is just this dystopian stuff. Well, some of it doesn't really fit. It makes for good theater, but it doesn't. It makes for very bad reality. Into the Badlands, 
Very bad. And some of this very bad reality stuff didn't work. There was also a TV, what was it, two seasons, um, uh, what was it, Revolution or something like, where power, power grids all over the planet went down. Everything, you know, there was no, no more power, nuclear power, planes fell out of the sky. Uh, there was just a power, uh, somehow, for some reason, power got sucked out of the planet. There was this whole conspiracy. I, I wasn't sure if it was aliens or not, but power got sucked out of the, off the planet. Now, the bad part about it was, is it took them almost an entire season to bring back steam power. Evidently, yeah, no type of electric, electrical grid would work. You know, so no solar power, no wind power. It, it didn't matter. It just the electricity didn't work. But steam power could work. But it took them almost an entire season of the of the first season of the of the show to bring in a steam engine. Really? You think that'd be one of the first things we'd have would be steam power? But I guess we couldn't revert back to steam. Well, I don't. So some of that kind of stuff, that, but they doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're not trying it. They're trying it, folks. Uh, understand what you're watching. Are you being fed propaganda and are you being conditioned to accept certain things? Yes, you are. Because things in the past that we would consider to be, that we used to consider to be abnormal is now considered to be normal. And it is considered normal via our entertainment choices and venues. Now it's okay not to put on a, a dress and a wig and lipstick and pretend that you're a woman, not just to get laughs like Milton Berle did way back in the 50s and 60s, but to just dress up because that's the way you feel most comfortable now. So today, you can feel like putting on a dress and lipstick and being a woman. And tomorrow, I guess you can go back to being a guy. But today, you get to use the woman's bathroom because you feel like a woman. Oh, I feel like a woman. But tomorrow, you can say, well, geez, uh, that was old at passe. I tried that. I don't feel like a woman anymore. I'm going to go back to being a guy. Uh, but that's normal. However you feel, that's that's fine. We're told now that it's fine. We've normalized abnormalcy in a lot of different things. So it's cool now for you not to be confused about being, you know, male or female or to hell. Don't even pick that. Just, you know, just call your, you're an it, a Z or a he, she, whatever. Whatever floats your boat today, that, that's fine. You know, and if it doesn't float, if, if what floats your boat today doesn't float your boat tomorrow, you can change it. We're being conditioned to think that this is okay. We're also being conditioned to think that whatever happens in the future, that's some sort of dystopian type of thing where, you know, we don't have power anymore. We don't have nuclear or gas or oil. Uh, yeah, because, you know, after all, the environmentalist wackos say that using that kind of stuff is evil, 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 evil. Well, I mean, we're being targeted and told and, and conditioned to think someday that this is what's going to happen. So expect it. And when it does happen, there's nothing you can do about it. Don't even think about using steam engines because you're just going to go back to, to no guns, even just going to go back to swords, swords and arrows. Yeah. So we're being conditioned for this. Don't, don't doubt me on that either. Just like they try to condition us for a lot of this stuff that's happening in D.C. right now. They're, they're trying to condition. Well, you know, Trump, they're conditioning us for Trump to be a failure. And if Trump's a failure, that means, well, in four years, why would we want to reelect this, this nonsense, what they consider to be, the left considers to be nonsense? Why? So they can get power again. Don't let them manipulate you, folks. Do not let them manipulate you this way. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is just actual factual stuff. And it's if you are if you are woke, as they like to say in colloquial speak, if you get yourself woke, you will see this type of thing happening on a daily basis to you. And then once you are woke to what they are trying to do to you and try to pull and the wool that they're trying to pull over your eyes, you're not going to go back to sleep and you're not going to be fooled by them. 
There's no more of this tomfoolery and tom trickery. You're going to know better. You're going to know that this nightmare that is Washington, D.C. is not Donald Trump. But it is the two-party system that we call the Democrats and the Republicans, but it's not really the two-party system. It's the one-party system called the establishment. That's what it is. And a lot of people realize that, which is why they voted for Donald Trump in the first place. That's why you got to stay woke. That's why you got to continue listening to programs like this. And it's why you got to get on uh, it's why you got to try to get on on or get out of 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 general politics um, the way the way that the lamestream media wants you to believe that it is. And it's not that way anymore. That's why you have to get on your elected officials on a constant basis. Put the pressure on. Tell them, tell, let them know. Put them on notice. Yeah, we're watching you. We, we, we've told you what we wanted. And you're not doing it, so you better get your ass in gear and do it. Big news. Uber's uh, president, Jeff Jones... Resi- resi- not the CEO now. Uh, no, no, what's his name? Shirts, Sheets, whatever. He, it's Schwartz. He, he didn't resign. The, the co-founder. He didn't. No. Uh, the, the, the current president of the ride sharing. Now, there's no real reason as to why. Also, GM tries a subscription plan. They're calling it a Netflix for cars at fifteen hundred bucks a month. I don't know what that's about, but. I, I you know I guess you get to you get to pick pick a different car every other day or something or every week. I don't just, it, are there that many Cadillacs for people to choose on a weekly basis? The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. could never be an opera singer. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that are happy about that. Almost half of Canadians, this is from Reuters, almost half of Canadians want illegal border crosses deported. Uh, what? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Canadians all of a sudden don't want don't want illegal immigrants crossing. Well, because they're not American. Well, they are Americans, but they're not the kind of Americans that, that the Canadians want. Uh, nearly half of Canadians want to deport people who are legally crossing into Canada from the U.S. of A. And a similar number disapprove of how Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is handling the influx, according to a Reuters Ipsos opinion poll. Yes, a significant minority of four out of ten respondents said the border crossers could make Canada less safe, underlying the potential political risk for Trudeau's liberal government. Well, I mean, this is uh, the interesting thing is, is that these people going into Canada now, they, they, <laughs> the way that it's not like they're entering uh, the USA from Mexico. Oh, no, they, they're bringing their stuff with them into Canada. And, you know, they got suitcases and uh, driving cars and taking Ubers uh, to the border in, in certain places. Yes, the, the increasing flow of hundreds of asylum seekers uh, of, of African and Middle Eastern origin from the United States in recent months has become a contentious issue in Canada. So why are they, why, why are they leaving here and going to Canada? Well, are they afraid that, that Trump's going to send them back? Well, that would be the fault of the, uh, the lamestream media perpetrating this kind of stuff. 
but only those people who would who are criminals or should not have been allowed into the country in the first place are the ones that are going to get tossed out and sent back from whence they came. And these are the people that are now saying, well, um, maybe we should go to Canada. And Canadians, rightfully so, are saying that this is not a good idea to have these people coming into our country this way. It's not a very good idea. We should not do this. It's going to make us less safe. We're not, we're not going to be safe anymore if we let these people come illegally in. But this is what Trudeau wants. You know, look, he's a big globalist, just like and the Canadians are fine. You know, the 35 million Canadians are finding this out the hard way, just like we did. But hey, maybe they'll learn the lesson and vote him out in a few years. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. 
It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. back indeed and here we are here on the rod Eccles show i'm still your lovable host um what we have now is malibu and this is from uh, a, a place called lawestmedia.com a few days ago the malibu city council voted uh, three to two to declare the city to be a sanctuary ci- city and not assist the federal government enforcement on immigration laws now, Malibu is not exactly the place where you would probably want a bunch of deviants or or anybody who doesn't fit in the Malibu society. And what is – Malibu is a, is, is a, is a fake-filled, phony uh, atmosphere sort of town where a bunch of people that live there are, are the famous and infamous, and each one of them thinks that they're more beautiful than, than their neighbor. Um, and also Malibu is this type of place where, where people, I mean, it's so bad. People buy a house there on the beach and they look at, oh, it's too damn small. No, it's only 3000 square feet. Uh, the house has got to be, you know, 5,000, 6,000 square feet. And they, it's amazing that they have the type of building codes that they have there. They wouldn't be allowed here anywhere. I mean, you wouldn't be able to build uh, those, those massive Houses on pil- uh, pylons and stuff like that, that close to your neighbor um, I- I- here in, in New England. I mean, it, unless your house is grandfathered, you're not allowed to be that close to build a, that close to your property line to begin with. And these people are right on their property lines almost. I mean, they're like six inches away. Uh, so it's a special area and place that if you, there, there's no way for you to get down to the beach unless, you know, you're willing to, to, to walk around, um, and 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 what have you, but uh, you know, go the long way around to get to a, a public, uh, a lowly public um, entrance to the beach. Now, now, understand that all those people that that live on, along the beach, you see, you know, what was it? Um, uh, two and a half men. You know, Charlie lived on 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 Malibu, or in Malibu on the beach. Well, they didn't. They don't own the beach part. But, um, you know, just, just, Charlie's house would be torn down today. Charlie didn't have a very big house as far as Malibu was concerned. And what, what they're building and putting up and replacing some of these older houses that are there. Um, so, again, you know, but, but it, it, that sort of thing doesn't fit the narrative of having illegals there. Because what are they going to do for, for work in order to afford those multi-million dollar mini mansions that are sitting on pylons and pilasters uh, out over the beach uh, looking out over the ocean. Well, in any event, this issue seems to have divided the city for weeks, but the council majority said they were concerned by reports that 80 students in Malibu's public schools are either in the country without legal permission or children of people in the country without legal permission. So they're saying that there are 80 kids in the Malibu city school system that the city has to pay for but they're not contributing anything back to society. In other words, you know, again, the taxpayer is being asked to foot the bill. Liberals are very good at spending other people's money. So they're asking the taxpayer to foot the bill into taking care of these people yet again. Yet again, as they would used to say. Councilman Rick Mullen argued against the measure saying, if we, uh, if we were Poughkeepsie, New York... This would not make the evening news, but when you have a small town with worldwide name recognition, that makes the so uh, 
You don't think Poughkeepsie, New York would make the... Hey, Poughkeepsie, what do you think about this? Upstate New York, you've just been dissed by Malibu. Oh, do, do, do you guys, uh, are you a sanctuary city in Poughkeepsie? New York? I know it's way up there, uh, you know, near the Canadian, the Canuck border, but uh, are, are you guys, are you a sanctuary city? I do not know. Maybe I should look that up. Uh, I don't go to Poughkeepsie very often. Actually, I've, I don't think I've ever been to Poughkeepsie. Nothing, not 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 that there's anything wrong with Poughkeepsie, New York. I mean, I've just never been there. I've been close there. I've been to Burlington, Vermont. Um, that that's close. I know it's not Poughkeepsie, but it's close. <laughs> is is Burlington, Vermont, a sanctuary? It's in Vermont, Bernie Sanders' backyard. It, it may probably is, even though most native Vermonters wouldn't want it to be probably is but it, there you go so you have a bunch of people out in malibu excuse me who are upset that they have to they have to foot the bill for nearly a hundred students are that are thought to be illegal um but they're they're not contributing back to the community whatsoever in the form of real taxes so well rod you say everybody pays taxes well yeah but if they are paying any taxes and, and their parents are, are really paying taxes and not just getting paid under the table, then uh, they, it's identity theft. But, you know, hey, th- th- there you go. Uh, so Malibu has voted to be a sanctuary city and to... Um, to thwart the federal laws and the federal agencies in, in charge of enforcing those federal immigration laws. So, I don't, I don't know, does, does, does Malibu get a lot of federal aid? Well, whether they do or don't, it's irrelevant. They should have that aid discontinued no matter what, no matter how little or how much it is. All of it, not not just certain kinds, but all. I know there's certain certain parts of, uh, of this stuff that it's supposed that really does help the affected in those particular areas but even for that it needs to be pulled the the there needs to be serious ramifications for violating the law there really does i mean otherwise you know uh, we're lawless otherwise justice isn't blind and you know we often you know, pick and choose our laws now? Is that, is that what the left wants to do? So those of us who aren't special, we get to go to jail. But those who are special don't get to go to jail for breaking the same damn law. That makes no sense. It's not right either. YouTube is explaining right now why some gay theme content is being restricted following complaints from users. Now, you have to understand what's going on with YouTube. And, and, and I don't know about the, the gay content thing, but I have noticed that there are some... There are some YouTube videos uh, that that you want to see that, and they say it's restricted, and you have to sign in to prove your age. Um, and, and there's a reason for this sign in, by the way. And th- I know some people are saying, "Well, it, it has to do with gay content." Well, it has, no, not really. I mean, bunches of people might might complain about some some videos on there, but. Uh, and and maybe gay gay themed types of videos are, are getting are getting you know um, not deleted but they're getting restricted. That, I don't know. I haven't. I don't watch on a regular basis on purpose gay themed videos. So I don't know if this is true or not. But I do. I have noticed that there are other videos that I've watched that are not gay themed that do have this sort of restriction thing on it this and there's an age thing i don't know if it's uh, somebody comes along they don't like it maybe it's a competitor you know a, 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 another youtuber doesn't particularly like it so they press the button to flag it and then youtube their algorithms say well okay enough people flag this thing so let's make it restricted content um and you have, have to sign in now understand that this there are two things behind this one because youtube really does want to point you in the direction of certain areas um, on their site because of revenue generating desires, as well as to get you to, to push you into the, their, their 
you know, their streaming service called Red, I think it's called, uh, YouTube Red, where supposedly there's a lot fewer commercials, um, ad spots, but you have to pay for it. You, regular YouTube is free. Red is like a subscription and you have to pay for it. And, there's, and they're trying to push certain content over to Red so you actually have to uh, um, buy it. And I, I, maybe that's what they're doing to, to, to uh, gay videos. They're trying to push people over to the subscription service of Red so you have to buy it. I don't know. Is that, is that, is that a problem? Would that be a problem? Um, Ed, well, you're not going to get CNN to be pushed over onto the Red side. Uh, the YouTube red because <laughs> nobody watches it, but YouTube says it restrict it's it's restricted mode uses community flagging, age restrictions, and other signals to identify and filter out potential inappropriate content. So I, look, I guess whatever it is, if there if there is some inappropriate, these people don't want their content to be construed as inappropriate. Okay, then don't put X-rated or R-rated stuff on a on a PG thirteen platform. It's pretty easy to get to get around that. But these people want to blame uh, blame everybody else but themselves for having their content restricted. So, I, look, I understand it that that like with anything else, I I've dealt with it o- over on Facebook before. You're going to have some people that no matter what, they're just going to flag you or claim that you're spam even when you're not, because they don't like you or like your content or whatever. Yeah, there's going to be a few people. There's always going to be a few people like that. But generally speaking, if you're getting your stuff that is getting flagged constantly and is getting restricted, maybe you ought to look at your content. Maybe your content really is that bad. I mean, it really that age inappropriate. And you have to understand that YouTube, its open platform, basically is a PG-13 type of platform. You can't just throw up R-rated and X-rated stuff and not expect it to get either removed or restricted. I mean, that's just insanity. Well, I have a right to post. No, you don't have a right to post it. You don't own the platform. YouTube is a private entity. It's owned by somebody. It's owned by Google. They get to make the rules. If you don't like the rules, go someplace else. Go to Vimo or start your own video server service. You can if you if you have some little bit of coding and you have a coding ability and you and, and you can find yourself access with a lot of bandwidth uh, on your website. You can you don't need YouTube or or any of the other video services to have video on your on your website. Do it yourself. I get really frustrated and tired of people talking about uh the, <clears throat> ooh, excuse me for a second. Let me take it. Ah, unprofessional. Need a drink drink a coffee here. Ugh. There we go. <clears throat> excuse me. Um I get tired of people talking about how they have a right to do this and a right to do that when they don't own the platform. Well, it's a they're inviting others. Yeah, they're inviting. They're inviting you to contribute content. I realize they're making money off your content without you getting a damn thing back. But they are inviting you to volunteer to put, voluntarily put this stuff up on their site. However, it doesn't mean that you get to put anything you damn well please. They can still have rules, regulations, and restrictions on the type of stuff that you can post on. And uh, obviously, this is something that, that YouTube has done. So if you don't like those, you have alternatives. Doesn't have to be well. YouTube's the biggest. That's irrelevant. You have alternatives. Oh, when people say, "Well, you know, YouTube has got the biggest audience." Well, do you have you know? YouTube's got a hundred million people watching. Well, great. Is is your audience a hundred million people strong? No, you know, I got a few thousand. You couldn't get those few thousand any other way. You can only get those few thousand on YouTube. Yeah, I don't think so. By the way. Um, they believe that they I don't I didn't download this story, but uh, the headline is that they believe that they found Brady's missing Super Bowl jersey and a confle- If you're into the NCAA March Madness, evidently a Confederate flag is uh, flies next to, to NCAA arena 
in South Carolina. Now, I thought they'd gotten rid of all the Confederate flags. Yeah, because Confederate flags is is all about being racist. If you're a Confederate flag flyer, you're a racist. Well, evidently, <laughs> there's a there's a Confederate, Confederate uh, rebel battle flag that is flying next uh, flying at the NCAA arena in South Carolina. <laughs> I, I'm so, I think it's funny. Rod, racism is not funny. I think all your bullshit about all this over ra- overly racist crap is is just that. It's bullshit. I don't give a damn if somebody flies a Confederate flag. If they want to, great, fine. I don't care what their what their feeling or meaning is behind it. I mean, real uh, seriously, are we really going? I mean, th- these are the same people that also stomp on, spit on, defecate on, burn the American flag of the USA. Because hey, if you now wrap yourself in the American flag, uh, some people on the left are saying that you're racist. So you know what? I know people who wrap themselves in the American flag. Most of them are not racist. So therefore, most of the people who are flying and displaying the, including black people who are displaying the Confederate flag, are also not racist. So it's just a dumbass thing to say and do. I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying into it. I may not agree with flying. I don't fly the rebel flag myself because I, I, I know what it, what it helps to represent as far as hist, uh, historical context is uh, concerned. But I also know that there are a lot of people now that just look at the, the rebel flag as what it is. Uh, what they believe it is to be a rebel on the outside, different, not racist. I mean, I, I, here it is. They they want to. The left is amazing. They want you to think in original context terms of the rebel flag, Confederate flag. But everything else out there, they want you to think in their new terms. You know, new terms of of what it is to be a man or a woman. That's a new term. It's it's fluid. Oh, but hey, the Confederate flag is not fluid. No, 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 no. That that is that is set in stone, man. You cannot change the meaning of the Confederate flag. Well, the Confederate flag means rebel today. It represents rebel, something different, going outside the norm, against the establishment. Nope, nope, nope. That's not what it means at all. And I'm on the left, so I know. It's all about racism. It's all about slavery, man. That's it. That's it. That you can't make it anything else. Well, you know, men are men and women are women. Oh, shit, that, that's old-fashioned thinking. No, 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 no. There, there are men that are trapped in uh, uh, women's bodies, and there are women trapped in men's bodies, and what they only they know. So this whole thing of this whole notion of man woman, no, that's old-fashioned. You got to come to the modern twenty-first century now, and you think about that. So that can change, but <laughs> I, I guess I, I guess the uh, the left are the only ones that can uh, that can determine what stays status quo and what gets moved forward. Yes? Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 It started with a knock, but it wouldn't end there. What happens in the story next, many wouldn't understand and most wouldn't believe. 5 plus 2 equals perfection by Samuel Rosette Jr. is a must read. The scriptures within are reminders of the ancient past and yet intriguingly infuses with texts which stand on the edge of the stage of relevancy. Available online at West Bow Press, Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, and SamuelRosetteJr.com. We've all heard of male enhancement. 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis' book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a long-haired young person came into our bank and said to me, I bet you won't lend me money to buy an electric guitar. Well, he was making $100 a week, and he was over 18, and I said, I bet you I will lend you money to buy an electric guitar. And I did. So what happens? The punk gets busted for possession of dangerous drugs, and we're out 350 bucks. There's one thing about kids nowadays... You don't have to give them credit. Universal Bank. We trust you. About as far as we can throw you. somebody um, restricted over there on uh, on YouTube. But again, you have to realize two things. One, you don't own the YouTube platform. And two, they are trying to, 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 to maximize their, uh, their value by getting you to see as many commercials as possible. If they can't do that, then to push you over to, to buying a subscription. Uh, either way, they, you know, Google wins. Doesn't really matter. Um, so you just you have to be aware of that type of thing. Uh, you know it is. Um, I, I I I I hate to 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 bring certain things up, but we have some facial recognition that is going on um, in in Great Britain. I guess the Guardian is. Uh, is bringing this forward. forward. Uh, they're they're using facial scanners in public toilet areas to tackle toilet roll theft. Who the hell is stealing toilet roll paper? And and how is it such a big? Is it really that big of a problem? Are they going to spend that kind of money to put facial recognition technology in the loo? Yes, this is from the Guardian. Facial recognition software installed in Beijing convenience. Uh, stores to crack down on people taking large amounts of toilet paper. Um, <laughs> they, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't get it either, folks. I really don't. Um, and finally today, Paul Ryan predicts the GOP health care plan um, uh, will fail. The GOP health care bill passed in Congress, will it? I don't believe so, said uh, Rand Paul, excuse me, uh, Rand Paul, not Paul Ryan. He said he doesn't believe that it will, uh, simply because of all the gamesmanship and everything that they're doing and playing over there. Um, you know, it, folks, it, I, I've warned you. We'll, we'll we'll cover more of this tomorrow about what's happening with uh, with healthcare. There's there's some stuff out there that is supposed to have been happening today, which is why I didn't really get into it today. But we will definitely tackle this and cover this tomorrow. More about the healthcare bill, and 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 also because we like to come up with solutions here to a lot of the problems. Also, what you could possibly do to help move this process forward and help President Trump get what he's what he promised to get rid of Obama. I told you folks before that these people don't really want want to willingly get rid of Obamacare. They really don't, and uh, it's just one of those things that we're going to have to live with and understand that we have a bunch of politicians. Uh, rhinos included, and even some non-rhinos. They're not, they're not really fully on board with this fully repeal stuff because they all, they're all talking about, there's only very few of them talk, not talking about repeal and replace. Most of them uh, are talking about repeal and replace when the reality is, is they, sh- they should just repeal, forget about replacing. Uh, don't doubt me on this. They, they really want big government, but they want to be in control of it and set the rules for it. They really do. 
In any case, we are out of time for today, so be back here tomorrow in 21 hours or so, and we'll do it all over again with some new stuff. Thanks for listening. I'm Rod Eccles. I'm out. Feels good to be a Clinton. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A shameless politician always plays her cards right. Got a crew for the fight on the airwaves. Lap dogs in the press keep the mouths tight. Cause a Clinton never needs to explain what, why it is, what they done, or with who. A real Clinton knows that they're entitled, and you don't get to know what they do. What, what, what difference does it make? For Clinton, what's loaded in some fat apple file? A Clinton plays the victim for promotion. A Clinton kills it off with a smile. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. A server full of secrets ain't no thing. Damn, it feels good to be a Clinton. Nothing ever hits with a sting.